In today's video, we're taking a look at the Macallan 25 year old anniversary mounts. So here we have it, it's the Macallan Anniversary Malt, the 25 year old series that is pretty much if you're a collector of old and rare bottles of whiskey, it's one of the most legendary bottles that there is to collect. So here it is, we've got a 1972 vintage bottle that we're gonna be taking a look at today while we go across the history, the prices and everything. But first things first, let's get this wooden box off the casks so it gives me a bit more space with the bottle. So the Anniversary Malt series started in 1983, which makes it arguably the second series that Macallan ever released. The first series of bottles, I would argue, was the 18-year-olds, and they were started in 1981. And of course, the Anniversary Malts were started in 1983. But why are they called the Anniversary Malts? And through all the research that we've done, we, we still don't have a clear idea why. The most uh, plausible theory is that it was a marketing gimmick by Macallan, because lots of people had 25th anniversaries and this was sort of a ploy to get them to buy a 25 year old bottle of whiskey. They also released at the same time as the 1957-83 bottle, the 25 year old, they also released the 50 year old anniversary malt, which we're gonna talk about in a separate video. But the anniversary malts that we're talking about in this video are the 25 year editions. And they were originally released, as I've said, in 1983, priced at 25 pounds so and i think that was pretty much a, a, another marketing ploy it's 25 year old whiskey for 25 pounds a bottle and it's the same with the 50 year old that was 50 year old whiskey for 50 pounds a bottle so in relative terms they were quite expensive releases when they were produced from its beginnings in 1983 there were 18 anniversary malt editions 16 of these carried a vintage and two of these were non-vintage. We're gonna talk a bit more about vintages in a moment, but the series ran until roughly the year 2000. And then in about 2004, McCallan introduced the Triple Oak series or the Triple Cask series, which was a 25 year old bottling. And that one went all the way through to about 2017. And then in 2018, the 25 year old series was sort of rebadged as the Sherry Oak. So it really has gone full circle. Over the last 38 years, McCallan have been producing pretty much a 25 year old release every single year. So as we've mentioned many times already, I'm very sorry about this, it was started in 1983 and that was from whiskey distilled in 1957. So we're going to talk about this when we look at the labels a bit more, but all the bottles until the year 2000 pretty much carry two features on there. You've got the distilled year and you've got the bottling year. So the distilled year on the first one that was released was 1957 and it was bottled in 1983. So as we've mentioned, there was 18 different releases of the anniversary malt and 16 of them have got vintages. And at the start, the years go a little bit funny. You get a release in 57, a 58, then you get a 58 and a 59. So it's a, it's a double year of distillation. So it's 58 slash 59. So the whiskey has come from those two years. There wasn't any, dis, any bottles released in 1960 or 61 or bear the 1960 or 61 distillation date and neither was there a 1973 distillation date. So the series is 18 in total and all of these have got the wooden boxes that we saw at the start. Now, the two non-vintage releases that you get are easy to distinguish between the two. This one is, is a much later one. So this is bottled at 70 centiliters. So the second version of the non-vintage bottling is bottled at 70 centiliters and it doesn't feature this distillation date or the bottling date. So you know that it was released post 1990 and it's argued that these are all the ones that came out after the year 2000. Now, the one that was bottled at 75 centiliters is during that transition period from bottles where we go from 26 and two third fluid ounces prior to 1980. Running through the 1980s, we have 75 centiliters. And then from 1990, we drop down to 70 centiliters. So the 75 centiliter that doesn't have a distillation date or bottling date is argued to be the bottles that were released or should have been released with the 6061 vintage in there, but maybe they just had half a cask from a different vintage in. And this is the point with this series, and this is what makes them so great. Not only are they a very high age statement, they're 25 years old, but they've got a distillation date on there and they've got a bottling date. Now those three features working together is quite a hard job for a distillery to, to sort of work with really, because this one here, distilled in 1972, 
25 years old and bottled in 1998 means that all the whiskey in this bottle has to have been distilled in that year, aged for 25 years and bottled in 1998. Now the change with, the, and we've got one here actually behind us, this is the 18 year old, they changed this to be the annual release. So the modern Sherry Oak series, it will be an annual release, it will say released in 2018 or bottled in 2018, bottled in 2019, bottled in 2020. 25 years, 18 years old. Now with just those two parameters, it's much easier for a distillery to produce that because they could use casks that were 100 years old if they needed to bulk up the volume because legally, they're not breaking any of the Scotch Whiskey Association guidelines because the, the whiskey is 25 years old and it was all bottled in this same year. If you put in this distillation date, then it means that you're only limited to casks from this year. So it makes it much harder. So these bottles with vintages, distillation dates and age statements are very uncommon in big series now from distilleries. And it's another reason why this is probably one of the best bottles, in my opinion, that you could be investing or collecting. So taking a look at the bottles themselves, they're all, the more often than not in these liquor bottles, uh, liquor bottles, Scotland glass bottles. And apart from the earliest vintages, so the 57, the 58, and the 5859, which had a screw cap with a foil capsule over the top of it, most of the other bottles feature this gold foil capsule over a plastic top cork inside it. So it's a relatively standard bottle and the bottle itself doesn't change much throughout the series. Now, the label itself is printed on this laid paper. So laid, it's a, it's like, it means that it's like a ribbed sort of paper. And it's, it's interesting for a few reasons. The Macallan itself is always written in like a, a very slightly embossed gold uh, pigment. And it's one of the ways that you can sort of detect genuine bottles because you can't print this off any physical printer. It's slightly raised when you look at it through a magnifying glass. The older bottles, you can see how it's broken down and deteriorated over time. And likewise, this 25 is often susceptible to fading as well. So if this bottle's been in the sunlight, you will, you know, you'll quite often find that the 25 itself has faded. They were all bottled at 43%. And as we've said, the UK bottles were released at 75 centiliters and 70 centiliters, depending if they were bottled in the 1980s or after 1990. And the American versions, obviously, they're all bottled at 750 milliliters and they were imported by Remy. And that will have a slightly different detail here. Now, the label itself looks like it contains a lot of important information on there. But in honest honesty, it doesn't. There's all this small text here. The most interesting part of it that isn't sort of like a marketing spiel for the distillery about how great they are. And this, this comment itself is saying it about how great it is as well. So it says, it has been the home of Scotland's finest malt whiskey. This opinion was notably confirmed when in a blind whiskey tasting recently organized by the London Sunday Times, it was the outright winner, scoring over 30% more than its nearest rival. Again, in 1982, the Macallan won the Madrid gold medal in the spirits category against competition from all over the world. So what it's basically saying is that this is really good whiskey. And can we prove it? Well, I can't. I, I'm not very good at tasting whiskey. I like drinking whiskey, but I don't have the adapted palate to do so. Serge on Whiskey Fun though has tasted lots of these anniversary malts and pretty much all of them that he's tasted have been like over 90 points, between 90 and 95 points, I think the average. So it really, really is good whiskey too. So it's got a back label as well. It's got a little bit of text in here. Again, it's, it echoes more of the same on the front. And essentially this talk on the front is about the quality of the sherry casks that they use. So all of the anniversary malts come in these fantastic, I say fantastic, they're actually really cheaply made pine boxes. So they're pretty rugged. They look a little bit like the Balvenie uh, box that we, we featured a few weeks ago in a video, the 1937, uh, yeah, 1937, 50 year old and they have this sliding wooden cover which has got beveled edges so it fits into the box and then they have this most of them so most of the later ones have sort of wooden mechanisms in here to hold the bottles in place the earlier ones have got cardboard interiors and pretty much all of them have got this horrible straw which deteriorates and falls apart all over your desk when you're handling these things so and that's what the appeal is to me about the anniversary malts it's they're, they're a really nicely presented bottle and 
the fact that you can build a vertical of them, so you can build a 57, a 58, a 58, 59, you know, you can complete the whole set of 18 bottles in these wooden boxes. And it's a fantastic site. If you ever see a full vertical of these, they're absolutely amazing. And it's, yes, this isn't quite the presentation of the folios and the other modern bo you know, boxes that they produce now, but this is where it all began. You know, these, this series has been running for, well, ran 38 years old now, this series that began in 1983. So they really are, iconic and old collectible bottles. And that brings me on to my final point about these. If you're looking to buy and invest in whiskey, then why the hell are people spending nine grand on Macallan Folio One or the Edition series and things like that? It's nonsense. You know, these are modern, no aid statement bottles. Most of the anniversary malts can be bought for less than £5,000 each. You know, yes, it's a lot of money, but it's a damn sight better value than the folios. It's 25 years old. Most of it is vintage and age statemented as well with the bottling date on there. And if you're looking to build a genuinely good collection that's going to hold its value over the years, and why do I say it's going to hold its value? Well, we've got 20, 30 years worth of auction data to see how these bottles have been growing. So two sites that we recommend for looking at your auction data, Rare Whiskey 101, and they've got an index of all the Macallan 25 years old, so you can see how the growth has been going. It's about 2012 that index started. You know, you compare that to say Folio 1, which has just basically gone bananas in the last few weeks and months, really. This has got a lot more pedigree and heritage behind it, whereas the folios and these other no age statement nonsense bottles just don't. So if you're looking to buy or start a collection, you could do much worse and start with the Macallan 25 year old anniversary malt series. We've normally got Macallan 25 year old anniversary malts available on our shop, so head to markliffler.com to see what we've got available. And if you've got a bottle that you would like to sell, please get in touch.